way You can try to seduce me, make me wanna play I don't know about that Welcome to this week's edition of the Friday Show, which is wicked. I don't know if anyone's going to get the wicked joke. It's because it's green. We're defying gravity, left, right, and centre over here. With me, Abby the Goldberg, and you, KD. Um, I was going to say we're not here again on the chat. Sorry, tonight. guys. Thank you for still being on the chat last week, even though we weren't. Although, live on stage, Bongo Boy did whip out his phone. It's, oh, oof, we're not and uh, just placed on the lurter, he had the uh, the Friday show streaming during the gig. During the gig, he did. And I logged on afterwards and was chatting away. So we're on there a little bit, so we might be on there this week. Who knows? However, you lot, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Really, really, really poor show. Not mm. one guest. Not one guest. Not one guess for what on earth are you up to? No, it was a bit tricky. It's because you edited out my easy clues. Your clues were so easy. <laughs> anyway, so we've ditched it this week and yeah. you've got no one to blame but yourselves. We're disappointed. You've let yourselves down and more importantly, you've let us down. Yeah. What have we got coming up on this week's show? We have. We have the brilliant question of the week. So keep your eyes peeled for that. See <laughs> The if brilliant the question brilliant. of the week. Well, it's well. a fun little game, Ooh. isn't it? See if you can get the right yeah. answer. Prizes galore. Yeah. Maybe we'll give a t-shirt as well as a mug this week. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious me. Uh, what else have we got coming up, Katie? So, we have a very special guest this week for an interview. It is... Now, I want you to do this person in some kind of interpretive dance style. Okay. Um... That wasn't as good as what you did last time. I know what you did last time. No, you got off your stool last time and too everything. Much. Go on, do much. it, do it, do it. <laughs> we have Jiggy with Viggy. Just need to lean on you oh. to get back on my chair. God, goodness. Yeah, we have Viggy for an interview. Um, she's also going to do a little song for us at the end, of a little piece for us at the end of the show. Beautiful. Which will be lovely. Will she be riding a piggy? <laughs> she might be riding a piggy. Who knows? So Jiggy with Viggy, not riding a piggy, coming up very very soon we then have a question and answer session because we've been asked some questions this inundated week. with what three questions two <laughs> two questions and then the bit that you haven't all been waiting for it is paolo's ukulele content you know how we're not doing every segment every week why 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 does this repeatedly get humor in haven't we and this week he's got a baritone out again so he's teaching you all baritone chords. I hope you've got all your baritones at home ready has to he, Has he just got a baritone and he's excited? He's, he's, like, what's the situation? I've lent him a baritone recently and he's a bit overexcited with it. But do you know what? You can play the chords on a normal re-entrant or normal GCEA tuning ukulele. It will be fine. Just not in a band yeah. situation. Just don't play along with him, otherwise it will sound absolutely awful. So <laughs> Palace Ukulele content and then little Jesse, he's had a rough week um he ended up when we got back from the gig at 1 30 in the morning last we weren't Friday, even back we weren't even back no he ended up in hospital um with concussion because he got kicked in the head at gymnastics <laughs> Poor little boy. earlier in the day and um so yeah i had quite i didn't have any sleep for about three days last week because we were in hospital till i don't know saturday afternoon and uh, he's perfectly back to normal he's absolutely fine now um, he just had a bit of a rough weekend, so send all of your love to Jesse on the chat. I'm sure he'll be there tonight. He wasn't on the chat last week because he wasn't feeling very yeah. well. He, went to, he took himself off to bed rather than watching the show, which is not like him at all. No. So hello, Jess. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, and it leads us nicely on to our very, very, very favourite, very favourite. My favourite. Chord of, of the week. week. It's getting better. It's getting better. <laughs> um, so yeah, chord of the week is all. It's always here. And then it is my one of my favourite bits. I got. To, he told me off last week because at the beginning of the show, you said my favourite bit was what on earth are you up to? That's why I'm. Um, he cried. Jesse cried and said, "But you said your favourite bit was chord of the week." Jesse, my actual favourite bit is chord of the week. Yeah. Um, that goes without saying. But my second favourite bit is the two minute loo review. 
What are you reviewing this week? Um, hopefully, if it arrives in time while we're filming this, I'm going to review a new pedal. Oh, goodness. What's if it the... doesn't arrive in time, I'm going to review an old pedal. Okay. What's the camera setup for that? Well, Two? One, one at the feet and one at the head? There might be a bit of blurring going on. <laughs> goodness. Well, we'll all look forward yeah. to that. Um, who, I mean, imagine reviewing a guitar pedal. On the toilet? On the toilet. How Ukulele are you going to plug pedal. it in? These are all questions okay. that are shortly to be answered. And then we have to end the show, as we said earlier, performance from... you got to do a V for Viggy. Jiggy with Viggy. Should we get um, on with it? That's a good V. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was doing. Let's get on with it. Let's so, question of the week. Roll BT. Bingo, bango, bongo boy. He's not actually there. He's, he's looking after the baby. We're on our own today. And um, there is something that's really interesting when we get into question and answers section, is that he's left us his phone. Has he? Yes. I don't know if anyone's seen you think Michael McIntyre sent yes! to all. Yes. I'm not sure we can do that, but we might have a good rifle through his photos. Oh my goodness. Who can we text? Can we text Fern? That would be a bit obvious. Um, so anyway, question of the week. <laughs> So, um, question of the week. This week, we have involved, he doesn't know, <laughs> we've involved Alex from the Southern Ukulele store. He has no clue that we've involved him. But um, he did a video this week on YouTube called... Five, Five affordable, affordable Soprano Ukuleles. Yeah, I think there was a favourite in there as well. Somewhere. Something along those Five lines. Five favourite affordable soprano ukuleles. <laughs> something like that. So, our question to the online chatters, and do you know what? I'm going to... No, I'm not going to open it up to afterwards because you could cheat. Yes. So, it is online only. So, our question to the online chatters is how many times... It's a 12-ish minute video. During this video about soprano ukuleles that's soprano ukuleles does alex say mahogany, mahogany. <laughs> i just thought it was funny <laughs> and there was another reason i picked it which you might see in a minute you have a mahogany neck a mahogany so yeah how many times does alex say the word mahogany in the video this week which is five favorite affordable soprano ukuleles um we're gonna play that in a little bit so you've got oh I reckon we've got an interview first got some question answers oh I reckon you've got a good half an hour do you think yeah good half an hour to um, get your guesses in nearest a bit and I am going to say Lynn Hunt I'm talking to you one guess only oh goodness Can't Lynn was literally out there, she Lynn. was like literally it's 10 11 12 13 14 was 15. she hunting for the right number she was hunting for the right number Oh, the Lynn. little minx. Little rascal. So, um, yeah, one guess only. Your first guess will be the only one that we take into yes. account. That is what I am saying. So, um, 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 I'm not sure who won. We should have looked who won last week. But if you won last week, we will get in touch with you somehow. And maybe on the chat this week, Bongo Bo will do mid-gig and find out um, who the winner was. So, um, that is question of the week. <laughs> So we have a very special guest with us today. Um, we've got a little intro to do, haven't we? Apparently we have. Even if it ain't all it seems, I got a pocket full of dreams, baby, I'm a I don't, I don't think we've oh, ever done anything no. as bad as that in Sorry, our lives before. Sorry, we murdered that, didn't we? Murdered um, that. We have Viggy. We have Yay! Jiggy with Viggy. I never know what to call her. Me neither. <laughs> my, in, my, in my head, I go with Jiggy before I go with Viggy. What I'm do like, your wrong. friends and family call you? Um, my friends and family generally call me either Vic or Victoria. And it's funny oh. because I actually don't go by Vicky in no. the normal pronunciation but where Vicky comes from is Vicky with the New York accent so Viggy like Vicky. a little more Vicky. fast paced uh, so, like biscuits so that's where that comes from <laughs> coffee 
Quaffy. <laughs> oh, how good are our impressions? Like probably, probably offensive. Is mm. how good our impressions are. So we have Biggie with us, Victoria, Jiggy with Iggy, Vic, Vic. <laughs> um, yeah, join us all the way from America. Viggy is she, she is TikTok famous. She's Insta famous. She's YouTube famous. Your TikTok numbers are ridiculous, aren't they? They're like amazing. Over over a quarter of a million now on TikTok followers. Yeah, I believe I'm just about to hit two hundred eighty thousand over there yeah. as of day of recording. Um, it's very cool. I try not to think about it or else I kind of spiral, but, uh, it's very <laughs> nice that there's that many people wanting to learn stuff and just really like music in general and by what I have to offer with you. So I'm very happy yeah. to have that following over there. I don't do the tick of the talk very much because I'm old. I've talked occasionally. <laughs> not tick. <laughs> not tick. <laughs> How have you found it from a ukulele point of view? Because it's not the first thing you think of when you think of TikTok, of pairing up with, with ukulele. But presumably, you know, it is a younger audience, and they're they're fully up for the ukulele content. I'm I'm gonna I've held this ukulele for long enough in one one video, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, but yeah, sorry. So how how do you find that? Do you find that sort of the people watching you is a younger generation on TikTok? Yeah, I think the majority of the viewers on there are on the are part of the younger generation but believe it or not a lot of my students when i put out my um open lesson slot survey and i get new signups a lot of them are of the older generation and they found me from tiktok so it is a bit of a surprise to see that it is a wide variety on there of course it is more of the younger generation but i do get a little bit of every demographic over on that old clock app but um it's a lot of fun in terms of what genres of songs I play, uh, as opposed to an app like Instagram, where I know my audience is a little bit older over there. I can kind of play around with what songs I play, and I can see how well they'll do on the different apps. So, for example, on TikTok, I'll do more of a trendy song tutorial. If it's a, a soundbite I know is trending on TikTok, because I'm also chronically online over there, so I hear the same soundbites everyone else is hearing. Okay. Um I'll do a tutorial for that song. And because of how trends work within apps themselves, that video might be like really confusing or like not, I don't want to say off-putting, but like it could be like, why did she do a tutorial for that if I were to post it on Instagram? Because yeah, it's so sense. inside baseball over on TikTok. They're like, oh, this is that song that's trending and now I can play it kind of a thing. So I think when I was starting out on TikTok, I was just kind of like messing around in my room with like a loop pedal and I was doing um, like loop ukulele covers of stuff. And that was how people started to notice what I was doing. And then from there, I kind of broke into teaching where people were asking me, oh, how did you do that? Or can you teach me how to play this chord or whatever? So it grew from there. I was really kind of shy starting out. I didn't really have any interaction with the comments other than like, here's the song I posted. And then I would kind of <laughs> go like this. Um, so breaking into teaching through an online platform was really something I never thought I was going to do. And now I post for years on TikTok. I've been on there probably close to four years now. And for about three and a half of those years, I was posting every single day. Um, whether it was a fingerstyle cover, it was a tutorial, a silly little ukulele meme, something like that. Um, because you have to fight the, the almighty algorithm and yeah. you always have something kind of chugging along in there. But I'm lucky that for me, I just kind of love doing what I do. So it never felt like work every single day to put something out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, that was really long winded way of answering your question, but <laughs> basically, yeah, TikTok has a younger audience and it's fun to cater to different audiences with different apps. But what's cool and is sometimes it surprises you. I'll play like a Steely Dan song and it goes ballistic on TikTok. I'm like, all right, I guess my, yeah. my Dan heads are over there, you know? <laughs> Or you, um, vice versa on Instagram. So it's it's been a lot of fun traversing the the internet with the uke, and I'm just glad people are digging it. <laughs> and do you find, like, on places like TikTok, you get a lot of people who aren't necessarily ukulele fans. Like, they've gone because it's the trending song, so you're kind of reaching a bunch of people that wouldn't expect to find ukulele on TikTok. Do you find that, or are a lot of them... Yeah, no, totally. I find a lot of people, I always get comments that are like, do I play ukulele? No. Did I watch this whole entire video? Yes. And it'll have like, <laughs> a lot of likes on it. So I always, yeah, it's fun to see those people come through or um, the comments where people are like, I've never seen anybody play an instrument like this, or I play guitar, but this is really wanting me to 
this is really encouraging me to start playing the ukulele, especially since you're playing it in such an unorthodox way. So it's, it's a lot of fun and it's really cool to introduce that younger generation to some of the stuff that I've been inspired by, you know, a lot of like the James Hill, Shimabukuro percussive ukulele type stuff. Like for me to be the person that now these people are going, Whoa, that shit's crazy. I got to play like that. Like it makes me feel really cool to kind of pass along that inspiration to a new generation. So TikTok has really created a career for you, hasn't it? Then I'm guessing, because I mean, you do this full time now. I was going to ask that because obviously, you know, Kevin, but I, don't know you so like mm-hmm. is this your full time now you know is it did you start off doing it part time and you had like a little job on the side how did it kind of progress and where are you at yeah so when i first started doing it like i said i didn't really think anything of it my friend had convinced me to download the app and i was like uh like i think most people are when they first hear tiktok they're like i don't need that app oh, i'm good <laughs> but um my friend told me to get it and um i just kind of started messing around posting stuff and i was still working at the time this was probably the, the tail end of what we'll consider the pandemic because we're still in, in end game for sure. But I was working at a grocery store, which was the best place to work during a pandemic. <laughs> um, while I was starting off doing that stuff and I would work my little job. I would get out at one in the afternoon and then I would go home and do that. And um, it just kind of started to, to get crazy while I was there. And then at the time I was in um, college for film production So I had a little bit of experience with video editing, a little bit. I had a good amount of experience with video editing and all that stuff. (laughs) Um, So that's where that side of it comes from. But once it started to pick up steam, I had, like I said, a lot of requests for like tutorials and even lessons. So I started getting private lessons going. I really enjoyed writing out full finger style arrangements. So I started to post those up for sale. So I kind of started to create this career out of it uh using the audience that i had and all the skills that i knew i could bring to the table and yeah at this point it's become like my full-time thing i love teaching i arrange songs i have my patreon where my friends get all weekly finger style tabs so i put one out every single week it's a way to keep my own chops sharp and just make sure uh, i'm always learning something new on my own while giving things out to the world so other people can learn too so so yeah i live and breathe this stuff if it comes off like that it totally does because that's what i do i sit in my little chair (laughs) and i just noodle around all day and um yeah it's it's a lot of fun i've learned a lot of musical discipline from it and i think i am learning something new every day just as much as i'm teaching something new every day so i really like it yeah do you try and get yourself kind of ahead of schedule or do you literally film kind of that morning for things you're going to put out that afternoon or do you do it like you know 48 hours before how do you uh, I'm a day of girly. I'll record it that day. I'll edit it and I'll put it out when I'm done. Like I, Amazing. <laughs> I like doing it the day of. Um, sometimes I'll I'll record them in advance if I know I have a trip coming up that I can't post. Yeah. Um, but most of the time, it's day of. When you see me in a video, that's me in yeah. this moment wearing that same shirt. Unless something, <laughs> unless something happened and everything went wrong, that's pretty much me on that day. I wanted to talk about kind of. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a bit of a transition between you kind of posting stuff during COVID and then building this audience and then making it your career um, and what you do to now going out and performing and doing festivals and you've got some great bookings for festivals this year coming up. Um which we'll we'll talk about. We're hoping but... to come to the one on the seventh of April. <laughs> Abby was like, "Oh, Brooklyn Ukulele Festival, can we go?" And I'm like, "It's, it's, it's like next weekend, Abby." <laughs> you can still come. Would love yeah, it. Yeah, well, I, would, I, I wouldn't put it past us. There's a phenomenal flea market in Brooklyn just after you go over the bridge. I don't know if it's still there. I imagine. Oh, my I imagine Viggy knows. But... Wonderful. Don't <laughs> it's open yet. It's normally summer. But so um... we can, you know, do both. <laughs> No, but that transition, because it does sit from chatting with you on our podcast, You Can Talk, available online, everywhere. Um, (laughs) It does seem that that has been a bit of a transition to now going out and playing in front of people and doing gigs, which I think is something that you had done like a little bit of, but it seems now you're, you know, I mean, you were at NAMM on the the flight stand, which Mm -hmm. just is an awesome place to be. And... Um, you'd say let's do the festival. So you're in Brooklyn Ukulele Festival. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah, can I remember? I can't remember. I know that you're doing the LA Music Festival in September. Yep. I want to see um, if you get them all. Oh, oh. Are they all in the US? You're doing Reno yep. again? Yep. Mm-hmm. Reno and there's another New York one, isn't there? I can't yep. remember what it's called. So I'll go back to your first part of the question. So um, it's been a really fun transition going from online teaching and playing to in-person teaching and playing. The first time I played live was probably right when TikTok started to pick up speed was at the Brooklyn Ukulele Fest in 2022. So not that long ago, really. mm -hmm, Not long at all. No. So I played at, it was a Beatles themed Brooklyn Ukulele Fest that year. Awesome. So I knew I was like, okay, I have like so many Beatles songs in my back pocket. So like, it's not a big deal. So I went and I just played like an open mic spot. I had two songs and my boyfriend recorded the whole thing, both songs. And it's really funny. I sit down and I didn't know, I did not know anybody in the New York scene at the time. I just, I, it was in uh, my friend's backyard and it was really intimate, really cool. And I, I sat down in a chair, which I don't sit when I play anymore, but this first time I did, I sat down and I said something like, hi, my name is Victoria. Uh, I go by Jiggy with Viggy on the internet. And this is the first time I've ever played not live. So be nice to me was the first (laughs) thing I said. (laughs) And everybody laughed and I was like, okay, I made them laugh. So like, I think I'm okay now was like my thought process. (laughs) I was like, if people can laugh, then it's okay. Yeah. So that was the first time I played live at Brooklyn Uke Fest. And then I played at it again the following year, along with um, the Porch Stomp Fest was a, it, it still is, it's a big folk festival um, on Governor's Island in Brooklyn. And I did that one too. And those were my first ones where I was just playing live. And then I went out to San Diego the following year to teach live. And that was a little bit scarier because I was yeah. like, okay, I there's a lot of other very big, people who've been teaching for many years here and I look like I'm 14 and I've never taught (laughs) in public before. So I was like, okay. So I I feel like everyone's got to teach once and be really scared during it. And then you're okay. Like anything, I guess. So now I'm happy to say I'm a lot more confident teaching. Um, I taught three really awesome workshops at the Reno ukulele festival this past year. And I kind of, I was never, ever, ever good with public speaking, which seems like crazy, like, (laughs) but I really, I cannot stress to you how much I cannot stand in front of a group of people and talk, but it was something about me teaching something that I was so confident I knew from my own private lessons that I do to like a big group of people. I was like, I guess I could do it. Like, I kind of like didn't think about how many people were there. And I just like spoke and was just watching people go, okay, I get it. So I was like, all right, I think I go, I think I like got this somehow. Like, but <laughs> if you put me alone in front of a room of like a lot of people and said, talk, I don't think I could do it. Like it was something strange. <laughs> like, I guess I got power from this and I was like, okay, I, I think I could teach it. And there was at one point where uh, Juju was one of the helpers at the um, Reno Youth Fest. They came up to me and they were like, oh, there's like almost a hundred people in the room. And I looked at Juju and I'm like, you need to go away. You can't tell me that. I was like, I need to just focus on this. I cannot think about how many people are in the room. You have to get out of here. So it's been a really cool transition. I really love teaching from three years ago, never having thought I was going to teach to now being able to teach all across the country is like something I'm so grateful for. It's so much fun. Um, I bring the same kind of goofiness and blah, blah, let me redo that real quick to my <laughs> teaching approach, which I think uh, always gets a little giggle here and there, which I'm all for. I'm all for the giggles and the goofs. But yeah, so I'll run down my schedule so that you can yeah. you can remember it. I'm just kidding. Uh... <laughs> we have April 7th is Brooklyn Ukulele Fest. May 24th through 27th, Memorial Day weekend for my US friends, is in upstate New York in the Woodstock area for the Ashokan Ukulele Festival. Awesome. Then we have in July, July the 19th, is the Midwest Ukulele and Harmonica Camp, which is in Toledo, which I'm really excited for that one. And then in the fall, I head to the West Coast for the LA Uke Fest in September and then Reno in October. So you you had most of them there. Uh, Yeah, I missed a couple, but... We're going to go to the LA one, right? You keep saying this, but no, we're not, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's all right. (laughs) But I do really want to go to NAMM next year and Biggie's going to be there as well. So that's where Mm -hmm. I really want to go. And just bury myself in ukuleles and recording equipment. Okay, amazing. Yeah, there you sounds go. awesome. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. 
how much so do you have to do like patron once a week do you do output for them or mm -hmm. yeah so for my patreon pals you get one finger style tab a week and you also get an annotated copy of it so i actually go with a color create color key and i put color dots on where every single finger should go on the different chord cool. shapes and stuff and if we have any percussive techniques it'll always be outlined in the tabs also along with some audio files that are slower for practice and things like that and then once a month which eventually i'm going to graduate to twice a month but right now it's once a month um we do workshops that are like skills drills we did bar chord breakdowns how to get better at bar chord type things awesome. chord melody 101 um our most recent one was a triplet strumming workshop so we learned about how to do like roll strums with our right hand so a little more technique based if finger styles not yeah at your speed just quite yet you we have the monthly workshops so in the same way that i cater to a lot of different skill levels on TikTok, i'm starting to incorporate that into my patreon as well and one thing i'm working on is these kind of like i don't want to think of them as play along sheets because they're more they emulate the like scratch sheets i make when i record tutorials on like a napkin or like on like lined paper so i've started to create these play along sheets that are like really shorthand and they actually look like they're on lined paper to go along with the TikToks that I make and they're linked by a QR code. So I'm going to start rolling those out on my Patreon soon, um, designing those as I put out the tutorials on TikTok so that you have the linked sheet to play along with, which I, I think is cool. So that would appeal to those players as well. So starting to broaden my horizons a little more on Patreon, but for a while it was just the weekly finger style tabs, which I, I think are my bread and butter. I am very proud of a lot of the arrangements that I've done. And um, I love doing the color coded finger dot yeah. thing because a lot of times you can get a tab and look at it, but if you're like, uh, I yeah. don't know where any of my fingers are supposed to go. That's like kind of, it's hard to be able to figure out which finger goes where at first. Like you have to kind of learn that fingerboard intuition. I like to think of it. Yeah. So I love to offer it as clear cut as I can with the color system. So, so yeah, uh, that's but how my Patreon started and is evolving. So basically, if you want more of a deep dive with Viggy, get on her Patreon. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. There's, there's so we've only again I say in all of these interviews, just scratch it's the surface. Just scratch the surface. So um, you know, maybe mm -hmm. at some point we'll go into some more detail. Um, we're going to get Viggy to play a song that we're going to put out at the end of the show. So um, for now, we're going to say thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's been so awesome much. as always. Good luck for the festival. Yeah. I'm just going to say I'm yes. loving Biggie's hair today. Oh, I love your hair. My Thanks. hair is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's so I pretty. cut my own bangs the other day. I feel oh, like they came amazing. out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love you. it. My hair's really curly and I never wear it curly because I just, I wish it was longer oh. and it's like about this long when it's curly. Yeah. But like you're mm -hmm. giving me curlspiration so thank I tell you. you I tell you I'm gonna I, say that's what yes. I, I want that more than the uke stuff actually I just want to <laughs> awareness for people wearing their hair curly yeah yes. so if well, I I'm do just that say, that's a job well done if we get everybody that's watching at the minute and also that watches this afterwards to hit the like hit the like button right now so within the next two minutes of this video next week I'm gonna put up a picture of you with your curly hair <laughs> Because it's amazing. I don't like Think... that that was framed as a diss. I would love no, to see that. Yeah. And it's not, that, it's not a diss. It's not a diss at it. all. It's <laughs> like Aretha Franklin meets Diana Ross. And that's Honestly, beautiful. I would love it's, to see it. It's Everybody who's ever seen this picture in our office has said to Abby, why don't you wear your hair like that? I mean, it is full on like out here, but it's amazing. So as many likes as you can press, if there's enough for my liking... Then um, we'll we'll do that Brilliant. next week. Next week's show. Can't wait. Um, Biggie, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much, and guys. we will see you soon. See you, Biggie. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Ah, oh, that was lovely, wasn't it? That was lovely. Thank you, Biggie, so much. We enjoyed getting jiggy. Did you get jiggy? Always. Oh well. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, um, love Biggie. She is awesome, and she's so cool because she's from where? New York State. I was expecting you to sing. New York State. <laughs> um, but she's so cool. She's such a cool. She's a cool kid. Whereas we're old. We are not the same age. Considerably <laughs> no. far apart. That is true. I'm slightly younger than Abby. So right, the next thing. What is coming up next? Um, the next thing. What is coming yes, up next? The next thing. What is coming up next is questions and answers. Oh, this is where we've got Bongo Boys. 
Shall I grab his phone? Let's do a text all. He's given us this so that we can scroll. We can scroll to questions and things. Okay. That no, he's no. put up. I want to go. But can if we go, well, if we go this way, that's last week's screen. No. Oh, he's, he's he's only got us into this. Can we get out of this? This is the question. Yes, we can. It's been taking a little but selfie. I'm slightly scared because we're going into Sam's <laughs> recent photos. So I'm slightly scared What's what I might see. I don't know. Can we play videos? It's a video of him videoing himself. Let's see. Oh, that is my best friend. I wouldn't oh, mind, that's but phenomenal. he hasn't even done this on purpose, right? Scroll down a bit. Let's see. Well, hold on. I'm seeing what we can actually show. He and Fern in the car. I bet they're singing. I don't uh, think we've got I any sound. I bet they're singing because this was from our gig last week, wasn't it? Got any sound? I don't think we've got any sound. The singing and eating cookies. That about sums them up, I'll be honest with you. This is some kind of... Um, invasion of privacy? Invasion of privacy, isn't it? Yeah. There's a picture from our gig last week. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, everyone see that? I mean, it's pretty hard to see on there. This was at the photography show that we went to. Well, can, can the viewers see that? We'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, there was... This poor dog was just on a stand so people could take photographs of him all oh, day. Oh, goodness. The... There's Fern asleep amongst some squish mallows. <laughs> yeah, we might, have to, we might have to skip some of these. Oh, there's Fernie, look. <laughs> there she is. Hey, Fern. <laughs> Fern's probably going to be quite angry at us. <laughs> but it's all right because she's not at the gigs this week. What is this? What's what? <laughs> <laughs> That's Sam as a sexy kitten. Sam as a sexy kitten on a Zoom with Olivia. You all remember Olivia. <laughs> oh, can I zoom in on that? There he is. Oh, they might be foxes, actually. <laughs> he no, looks very, very uh, he does, chiseled, doesn't he? doesn't he? Right, I think we need to stop this game. Can we just text someone on. and see if they reply during the... Um, who, who should we text? We can message Olivia and we could tell her that he really misses her and he didn't know how to tell her, but... He is secretly in love with her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Go on then, you do it. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sam. Never leave us your phone. Never, ever leave us your phone. It, what a silly thing to do. How can I casually start it? Um, I don't know, but your TV's gone off, I've just noticed as well. <laughs> so I'm going with... Right. Oh. So this is a little awkward, and I've been struggling about telling you. Um, oh, this is good. But I was really hurt when you didn't believe it was my birthday. <laughs> it was. I'm just saying the message is higher up. So Abby doesn't want them in here. <laughs> Customers. <laughs> well, oh. it was my birthday the other day, and you didn't believe me. Um, I really miss you and wondered if you feel the same. <laughs> She's online! She's ready! Let's see if we're going to reply. Let's see if we're going to reply. Shall I stay in it? So don't, like... don't show all these messages. <laughs> Come on, Olivia. Come on, text back. Text back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We'll keep an eye on this and we'll come back during the show. I don't know how that works. Let's, um, I don't know how this phone works. No, right. Let's do the question and answers. Right, how do we... Um, and this is why I'd never leave my phone. Never leave your phone with, with us two, honestly. Like, what a silly thing for him to mm, have done. So silly. Right. So. Shall I read this one? Go on, then. This is regarding our... <laughs> How to choose your ukulele amplifier video. Uh, great video, guys, and superb playing. What is the uke, by the way? Anyway, what would be best to get a range of sounds? I love the acoustic amp, but it does but does it have the more grungy electric effects, or would I need a pedal board, etc. for that? Trying to keep it as simple as possible. Thanks. From CJ Pierce. Yeah. So firstly, what's the uke? Do you know? Um, the uke, I believe, was the fireball. Yes, it was. 
Goodness gracious, Great Balls so Fireball. It was Paolo's Fireball. Um, that's that question. I wasn't listening. I was too. I was too concerned about whether so Olivia's answered back on it. They want. They like the acoustic amp, but they want a more grungy electric effect. Will they need a pedal for that? Yes. So the acoustic amp, it just does acoustic sounds, um, and pretty much every acoustic amp will do the same. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. So every acoustic amp will do the same. Um, there's various options. I would suggest for ukulele that you get a pedal that sits in front of the amp, so you plug your ukulele into the pedal and then into the amp that does the grungy sounds for you. Now, that could just be a distortion pedal because you've got chorus and delay and reverb all built into the amp, so that would work perfectly well. Or you could get a multi-effects pedal, in which case you can do whatever sounds you like. The thing with acoustic amps is they are basically just full... Oh, oh. And I think, think we might have had a message back. Stop it. Find out in a minute. Um, but um, they're full range speakers, so they pretty much will play anything. So you could get a big multi effects pedal or even like one of the cheap Zoom ones and put that in front of the amp. It will work perfectly. As opposed to a guitar amp where they're not full range speakers and you can't do everything in that. So the acoustic guitar going through, or acoustic ukulele, sorry, going through an guitar amp will not sound as good you'll be missing so much low end from the signal and things like that a bass amp is another full range speaker so a bass amp and an acoustic amp are very very similar the difference being most acoustic amps nowadays have built-in reverb and chorus which a bass amp wouldn't have and normally you can plug a microphone into them as well so basically get a distortion pedal and put that in front of your acoustic amp or a multi-effects pedal and do it that way your only other Stop it, she she's, replied. She's replied back and I've just seen the beginning of the message. <laughs> it's epic. So <laughs> the beginning of the message just said something like, I'm sorry I didn't realise. <laughs> so um <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Basically, we can't talk to you right now. We can't talk about acoustic camps and pedals. Are you mad? Let's go back to WhatsApp. <laughs> you should be scared. Right, here we go. What's that? Oh, do you want to read that? Oh, she's gone casual. I'm so sorry. I didn't even realise the day. Everything's been flying by so fast and days burn together. Yeah, I miss you and everyone so everyone. much. Everyone. Smooth. Oh, Olivia's used Olivia. to having to let down boys, isn't oh, she? she so doesn't know that we're doing this, does she? What can we reply? Yes. I thought maybe you might be up for me coming <laughs> to visit sometime. <laughs> you are so rude. Can you do an emoji as well? Um... <laughs> this is Do phenomenal. You know, Fern is gonna kill us. People, people watching this. Yes. Sam's dad watches this. <laughs> Sorry, Bongo Dad. Hi, Tall Steve. Funny. It is funny, honestly, Tall Steve. It is funny, and he left us with his phone. I did tell him that we might like. Didn't say that we'd send a load of messages to Olivia, can we, but can I did we say we might look through his photos. Steve and say, Dad, I need to tell you something, and then just <laughs> never send a follow-up. <laughs> no, because you'll panic his dad. I'm fine, but I just need to tell you something. <laughs> I tell you, so that was kind of the answer to the question, but we got well laid. Let's go to the next question. While we wait for Olivia to reply. You can reply. like this question, go on. This is regarding the Enya Nova concert ukulele review by Paolo... Have this instrument in electric version. Do they do an electric version of this instrument? Have they? Have they this instrument? Um, they do do an electric version, and they do a um, sound wave type thing where it's got built-in reverb and chorus and stuff like that. I am. Um... It's a lot more expensive, um, so I don't know if I would go with the electric version of that uke because I think that uke's really good for what it is, which is a cheap plasticky fibre and carbon. They call it fibre and carbon, but it's not. It's a composite. Um, fibre and carbon? Carbon fibre. <laughs> my, my brain is all over the place waiting for a reply. Um, so, effectively, it's a really good uke for what it is, and I think the concert version is around about, when we bought it, it was around about £110. So there's that sort of price point. Um, <laughs> Stop it. Not yet, not yet. 
um, that sort of price point. So I would say that it's a great instrument for that. I think if you were going to spend a lot more money to get like the Soundwave version with the pickup and all the effects in, I would consider going for one of the Flight, like the Flight Diana or something like that, because I think it's a slightly better sounding instrument with the pickup in, personally. But they do do one, so they do do electric um, in your Nova. Yeah, so thank you very much. That was from... Isabel oh, Fernandez. Right. I believe. Thanks, Isabel. Oh, my stomach's hurting. This is honestly. So is that it? Is that all the questions? That's all, I've gone back to Sam. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Did you just snort? <laughs> A little bit. Let's go back to the screen. Thank you for your questions. Please send some more in next week to us. We love yes. answering them. Even when we mock you, we do really appreciate and, it. And, 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 ask anyone anything. We do have a couple of ask anyone questions. One was for Kevin Bacon. We couldn't get an answer. We did try. Kevin Bacon? Yeah. Is he a ukulele player? Yeah. Is he? Yeah, very well. I mean, you ukulele player. Kevin Bacon, the actor? No, Kevin Bacon from Bromsgrove. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Kevin Bacon, the actor. Footloose wow. and all, all of that jazz. So I'm doing Lord of the Dance, but... He's not in Footloose. Kevin Bacon's in Footloose. Is he? He's in the serial killer TV drama, right, of recent years, and the E.E. E. Abbots. The E.E. Abbots, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But also Footloose. Is he? Yes! <laughs> Look it up. Right. So, um, coming up... <laughs> she's literally looking it up. Or you're texting Olivia. Coming up now is... He's back with his Barry. It's Paul's ukulele content. Oh, it is. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, I've still got the baritone, and while I've still got it for another week or so... I thought I'd do another quick tutorial for a song that we've done in the Anarchy Band, Never Tear Us Apart by In Excess. Um, great song this, and it's got a really nice muted little um, sound going on. So um, obviously I'm playing it on the Barry. Let's just have a little listen to the chords that I'm doing first off. <laughs> riff that's running through it so this song is I think it's in 12 8 actually and you've got uh, these little sort of triplets almost one two three one two three what I'm doing um, I'll show you the chords first and then I'll show you what I'm doing with my right hand how I'm muting it so the chords are A minor okay so two two one zero so two on the D string two on the G string and then my first finger is on the first fret of the B string giving us an A minor okay so that's your first chord after that you're going to an F okay on a baritone third fret of the D string second fret of the G string and then my first finger is doing a little barre well half barre it's covering the first fret of the B and E string. So that's your F chord. Okay? So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, F, two, three, F, two, three, F, two, three, F, two, three. After that, we're going to a D minor chord. Okay? So your first finger, you're just going to move over, so you've got a one on the E string. I'm then using my pinky, but you can use your third finger, on the third fret of the B string, and my second finger. 2nd fret of the G string, so that's your D minor, okay, so we've got A minor, the F, the D minor, and then back to F, okay, that's your riff for every verse, okay, the chorus bit is just 3 chords, it does a C, which is second finger, second fret of the D string, then an open string, then first fret of the B string. Okay, F, so C, then you go to F, which we've already covered, back to C, back to F, back to C, back to F, and then G. Now G, you've got two options. I personally just slide the F up. Okay, so I slide it up two frets, give me a G. 
There's an easier G that you can do, just do 0, 0, 0, 3, same chord. So that little bit. And then either slider or go there. Okay, so um, when I'm counting this, um, I'm just going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Technically, if you were counting it, you would go one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. That's how you know you've done four of them, okay? One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, and so on, okay? Um, the muting bit, I'm placing my the my hand, the sort of this part of the, the hand here, I'm putting it on the bridge there, okay? So it's muting the strings. You don't want it too far forward. If you have it too far forward, you just get a horrible scrapey noise. So I'm running parallel to the saddle there. I'm on it, I'm just leaning forward a little bit. I'm then using my finger, or you can use um, a pickup, doesn't matter, just to do the hitting here. So if I lift up, you can hear that muted sound. That's what gives it that And you can hear that little pulse as well. I'll knock my head. Every other sort of one, two, three, 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 like that. That's your pulse. So the mute, you're just putting your hand there, resting it gently on, if you put it parallel, so it runs down, then just lean it forward slightly, and then pick with either your finger or a plectrum, you'll get a brilliant muted sound. There you go, that's how we do Never Tear Us Apart. Um, again, it's a nice easy one for me, I don't have to think too much. There's some difficult timing in it and Kev does some brilliant piano on, piano on it, but I've got a relatively easy part in that one. Um, enjoy the rest of the show, thanks for watching, bye now. This is how I always sleep. <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> A little. Oh. Right. Oh. <clears throat> well, I hope everyone enjoyed Paul's baritone content, as it's now called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. Oh, we are a couple of buffoons, aren't we? We get worse every week. People watch this and just go like, are they drunk? This, yeah. is, this is actually the middle of the day. It's half past two. And we're not drunk, just to clarify. If just behind the wall for a second, it's half past two on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> it's not even Friday. It's not even Friday. Anyway. Um, oh, thanks for that, Paul. Thanks for Riveting, that, Paul. as always. Riveting. I tell you, it is nice to get a few Zs in, though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sleeping well at the moment because baby Anarchy's teething. So, yeah. Oh, Thank you, Paul. It's great. Right. It is time. Um, as I said earlier, he had a bit of a rough weekend. Give him some love. The man himself. Favourite. Should we do it together? The legend. Chord of the week. Go, Jess. Chord of the week. This week's chord of the week is an A major seven, which is a one one zero zero. Do it once more. That was brilliant. Press really hard. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. How's your head now, Jess? Good. Good. You feeling much better? Yeah. Okay, love you. Love you. Cool.
of the week. Oh, he's such a cute guy. That was amazing, Jess. Thank you. I love that you boy. You teach me. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> teach me every week. Thank you. Yes. Um, we love that. Pete Moss commented last week and said, um, great chord. I don't know if he was being sarcastic or whether he thought he it was a great chord. But um, maybe, or maybe he might have gone, no, that's not what chord that was. But anyway, um, chord of the week. Love that bit. It's now time for, before we check back back in on the phone, it is time for the two-minute Lou review. Before we check back in on the phone? Yeah. Oh, Sam. Yeah, check yeah, back yeah. in on the phone. It's time for the two-minute Lou review. Flash. Oh, you flush an old-fashioned toilet and I flush a modern one. I'm surprised you don't just wave your hand over the sensor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so I've had a bit of a disaster with the two minute loo review. When we filmed that last segment, it was Tuesday. It is now the early hours of Friday morning. In fact, it is 2.15 in the morning. Um, We are in, where are we? We are in Manchester. That's where we are. We've just done a gig at the Vale in Mosley. Um, I'm at a premiere in. I've got a very noisy fan in this toilet which is not great for doing this. So what I'm gonna do is, good gig by the way at the Vail tonight, really enjoyed it and met some fantastic people. I'm gonna show you this pedal. This is kind of a two minute loo review. I'm just gonna show you it and go, what an amazing pedal it is. It's kind of wooden and metal and cool looking. It's made by Zoom. Um, It is an acoustic pedal. It is the Acoustic Creator AC3. And basically, it does all of these different things. So you've got EQ and stuff like that. It's got a built-in tuner. It's got built-in effects with reverb, delay, and chorus and things like that. It's got a compressor in there. It's got a boost side to the pedal. You can choose what type of instrument you're using it with, what type of pickup you've got. It has direct injection DI outs on the back. Um, I used it for the first time tonight in the gig and I really, really enjoyed using it. So, in fact, I'm shorter than two minutes today, mainly because of the noise that's coming out of the fan in this Premier in toilet. But, um, full review, I'm going to do this, a proper full review at some point in the next week or so. Um, as opposed to a two minute review, there's way too much. I couldn't plug an amp in. It's, like I say, it's like gone to a.m and I'd wake up the whole hotel. So, bit of a disaster, but fantastic pedal. Think of this as a kind of a precursor to the proper review coming out. But yeah, Zoom, Acoustic Creator, AC3 uh, AC3 rather, used it for the first time tonight. Really, really very, very impressed. So full review of this pedal. I think it is perfect for ukulele players. Um, Coming up in the next week or so. Did you enjoy that? Loved every second. Ev- loved all 120 seconds. What was your favourite bit? Uh, my favourite bit was um, when you uh, spoke about the pedal. <laughs> Brilliant. Comedy gold, that was. Right, so, um, two minute loo review. I'm going to do a full review on that pedal as well because it's a really interesting pedal and has potential for ukulele players. So I will do a complete, that was just a very, very quick overview of what the pedal does, but I am gonna do a complete review of it. Unless it hasn't arrived in time and he's reviewed an old pedal, in which case he won't do a full review. Yeah, I will. Oh, okay, all right, good to know. I've got one that's as good. All right, perfect. Maybe next week I'll do that pedal. Who knows? Right, question of the week reveal. I just heard the door go and I'm like scared that it's Sam coming to shout at us. (laughs) (laughs) How will he know? He might have. Shall we, shall we have a check-in of the phone before we do question of the week reveal? Shall I check that like Olivia hasn't messaged me with like a HR issue? (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, so Olivia's now back in America. But it's technically her last day with us in two days, so... Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So give Olivia some love as well. Right, um, let's have a look. We've got all these pictures up again. Last scene. Last scene. Yeah, she's not read it. Oh, 
goodness, that's so We've caused awkward. some trouble. We've caused some trouble. She's racking her brains <laughs> trying to figure out how to not have him come You're visit. probably texting all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's her she did it not me should right. we was it too far to go on Skyscanner and send a screenshot of some flight times <laughs> <laughs> for tomorrow <laughs> come on do it should I just do it one way <laughs> yeah <laughs> well he doesn't know how long he's staying does he we'll go direct flights <laughs> <laughs> what can I do <laughs> I'm gonna send that video of him pouting into the camera as well. <laughs> I'm doing that myself. <laughs> we just don't know any sound because we couldn't hear it. Yeah, I've got no idea what the sound is. I tell you what we'll do at the the very just as we end this program, me and Abby will just send a picture of me and her with Sam's phone. <laughs> Just to clarify, in case anyone's worried, Fern. Oh, she was last seen a few <laughs> minutes ago, but she didn't read it. <laughs> right, um, where are we up to? Question of the week reveal. So, Alex, how many times did he say... Mahogany? Mahogany! I can't do it. It was kind of, He sounded a bit Welsh, like... Welsh, um, I thought. Well, he sounded nothing like your impression of Rach last week. <laughs> Which I'm Rachel more, and I'm from Wales. Yeah, but it was more Polish and South African by the time you finished. But um, Nothing wrong with Poland or South Africa. Do you know what I love about Rachel is that she messaged me and said that she found that absolutely hilar- hilarious. Yeah, don't worry. We're not offending people left, right and centre. They do actually think we're funny. But, or they're just humouring us. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but we love Rachel. And Rachel, hopefully we're going to get on the show at some point yes. during this run of Friday shows. Cannot wait. Hopefully live. Love um, so, um, question of the week reveal. How many times did he say mahogany? Let's have a look. Bongo Boy, who's not behind the camera today, roll VT. Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and today we're going to take a look at five more affordable favourite ukuleles. This time, focusing on the soprano size. It has a solid spruce top with laminate mahogany back and sides. You have a mahogany neck. A ukulele should be mahogany. Mahogany, mahogany. Solid mahogany top. Not mahogany, mahogany. Mahogany, it's mahogany. How many times is it? Well, that's right. Not once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, or nine times, but... It's a ten from then. Ten times. So if you guess 10, or the closest person to 10, yeah. you're in for a right treat, a mug, maybe a t-shirt. Yeah. Let us know what size you want. They come small to double XL. Yeah. I, I think I'd like a new mahogany ukulele. I'm Rachel and I'm from Wales. Mahogany. Mahogany. Um, also. It sounded like. Oh, hold on. Is the phone ringing? Where's Sam put the phone? <laughs> Oh goodness. We've lost the phone. We've lost the phone. Going on it's, the phone hunt. It's ringing and we can't find it. Ring, 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 ring. I'll tell you what, luckily, we <laughs> oh, have, we have we another phone. Transfer the call to that one. Yeah. While well, you got that there. Uh, yeah, is that Alex? Yeah, we were just wondering how much the soprano ukuleles were. <laughs> well, if you're going to talk about affordable favourites, you need to talk about the price. No, I don't need to talk about the price. Currently. Currently. No, I don't need to talk about the price. I'd like to know how much some of these ukuleles are. No, I don't need to talk about the price. Alex is very passionate about not telling you the price. He was very passionate in that video about not telling the price. Which, to be fair, we now do as well. Because if you put a price on a ukulele, it like changes almost immediately. We do sort of, it's around, yeah. you know. I don't know if anyone can hear the guard now. He's... I think it's a combine. Yeah, well, that's going to sound well on this video. Sorry if you're getting a load of interference. We're in the middle of... T- um, interesting. I'm going to be serious for a second. I'll go on. So, because Alex posted that video, and then he put a post out on Facebook saying, basically, this is why I don't post videos about Sopranos, because it had the lowest views in the time scale of... It was below average on the views on YouTube. Um Which is a very valid point, because we get that criticism as well about why don't we do more Soprano things. But you're not watching them. Yeah, it doesn't have the interest. So I think that's from Olivia. That's from Olivia. We'll look in a minute. I think that um, sopranos are fantastic, but we need to kind of they need some innovation in design or the way that they're presented or something because it's all very well having a soprano in a Martin shape and they're lovely, and I think we've got one of those somewhere that's really very nice. Um, 
but there seems to be more innovation in the tenor field and perhaps that needs to go into the soprano from the manufacturing point of view just a very little serious point let's, see what, we, olivia let's, said. let's see what olivia said instead i think it's like hello silly which makes me wonder what he said in the video <laughs> um right let's have a look let's have a look. he's never going to leave us anywhere never. near his phone again here stl i don't know what that means <laughs> is STL some sort of kid slang that we don't know? Hold on, Abby's not been putting kisses on, so I've now put some on. <laughs> um, we've only got one thing left. We have, and that's a brilliant performance from the Jiggler herself. <laughs> the Jiggler! <laughs> the Jiggler! Oh, I'm going to tell her that. Yeah. The Jiggler. Um, huge. The Vigla. Jiggler the Vigla. Huge thanks to Viggy for joining us. Huge thanks to you uh, for joining in the chat, for sending questions. Um, huge thanks up with to us. Bongo Boy huge thanks to Bongo Boy and Olivia for being and, such good sports and probably Fern for being such a good sport Fern Fern you're a good sport just remember <laughs> we that you. we love you Fernie um, <laughs> we will see you next week we will be on the chat next week yeah yeah um, have a lovely Easter it's Easter yes happy Easter yeah happy Easter we did an Easter special last year that had you dressed as an umpa lumpa and you were you a bunny I was a bunny I don't know where my bunny costume is I might, um, I might get that out again it scared Hannah didn't it, in the office you did, yeah. Even in the packet, she had to turn the packet around because she couldn't she, look at me because it was sat behind me. She, was she didn't scared. like the bunny face, did she? She doesn't. Um, Neither did my child. No, he hated it. He cried. But anyway, have a lovely Easter. Don't eat too much chocolate because we will. And uh, we will see you next week. Please do like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more of this anarchy. Yeah, crazy. We love crazy, you. Crazy, crazy. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Don't. Hold on, hold on. We're back on screen. We forgot to send the picture to right, Olivia. Go on. I'll do it. I'll do it from mine. So you hold up no, his no, no. WhatsApp got, between us. We've got to take it on his. Oh, okay. Right, ready? He's getting the first plane <laughs> over there. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Olivia. Sam, le Sam left us with his phone. We didn't know what else to do. Love you. Love you. Bye bye. <laughs>